let's talk about the considerations from a lubrication standpoint when we're using gases that are contaminated. So gases, for example, that might come from a landfill or from a biogas plant or a digester, something like that. So let's take an example of a man who drops some plasterboard into a landfill. Now that plasterboard really could have come from anywhere. It could have come from building materials like gypsum or gyprock or something like that. Um, what's going to happen though is it ends up in the landfill and slowly that landfill is going to bury the material and compact it. So it's going to end up with a whole bunch of food waste, plastic waste, you know, landfills uh, not really known for sorting the material. That hopefully happens at the municipal level. But there is a mix of all kinds of materials. And that calcium sulfate, sulfate which is in uh, the plasterboard, is basically going to be eaten by bacteria, right? And when it eventually eats that, it's going to produce gases. Now, the gas that we want is methane, right? Because that's a nice, clean burning gas that we can turn into electricity. The problem is that in a landfill, we don't have much control over what goes into the landfill. And so we get things like hydrogen sulfide, for example. Now, hydrogen sulfide, which is H2S, is that rotten egg gas. And what is going to happen is that when it mixes with water, it can produce sulfuric acid. That's H2SO4, which is a strong acid, which we strongly dislike in our engines because they can cause all kinds of corrosion problems, particularly with the bearings. Now, this is a multi-step process. So actually what happens is you have H2S, it combines with oxygen. So this is a, an oxidation reaction and you get um, sulfur dioxide. That sulfur dioxide combines with more oxygen. You get sulfur trioxide and the sulfur trioxide combines with water to get sulfuric acid. Now, what does that actually look like? Well, generally what's happening is it's, it's all happening in, in the uh, combustion chamber, right? So we have H2S come along with some of the methane. Now at some landfills or, um, or sewage treatment plants, you might have a H2S scrubber that tries to remove as much H2S as possible. Sometimes though, it's not economically feasible and you are gonna have some amount of H2S come in with the rest of the gas. I've seen levels up to you know, 1,500 to 2,000 parts per million. So quite, quite high levels of H2S. So effectively what happens is we get H2S combusting with oxygen, right? It is going to produce sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, which then is gonna combine with water in the crankcase to form sulfuric acid. Now, H2S is not the only contaminant that we can have in our gas. Like I said, landfills are mixtures of all kinds of waste materials. So we could, for example, get chlorides that come from refrigerant breakdowns. They are gonna form hydrochloric acid. We could get uh, nitrates from the nitration process. They form nitric acid. Um, you know, perchloric and chloric acids come from refrigerant breakdowns. So there's all kinds of contaminants that can cause acidic products that end up in our engine oil and can cause real damage uh, to our engines. The other big concern that we have is um, in these contaminated gases is what's called siloxanes. So siloxanes are actually a family of different molecules that have this siloxane group, which is the silicon bonded with oxygen bonded with silicon. So that's the siloxane functional group. The thing about siloxanes is that they are used in many, many different applications. So they're used in things like the automotive sector, the aerospace sector, construction, um, adhesives and, and paints, um, cooking materials, defoments. Uh, they're used in dry cleaning industry. They're used in electronics. They're used in jewelry. They're used in makeup. They're used in personal care and they're used in toys. So realistically, all of those things, if they end up in the landfill, are going to produce uh, these siloxanes. Now, as I said, siloxanes come in a variety of, of species. So this example of a, of a kind of like a cyclic siloxane is what we would call a D4 siloxane. There are also D5s and D6s, and they all produce different species. These themselves are not necessarily dangerous. It's what happens when we burn them in the combustion chamber. So if we oxidize these, right, which is what combustion is, it's a fast oxidation process. What we're doing is we are breaking apart that molecular structure and we are recombining it to form a crystalline structure, which is actually silica. And silica is of course, extremely abrasive and it's the main component in sand. So what we're effectively doing is we're producing sand in our engine. And I'm sure you can appreciate that it's not good to have abrasive material in your engine. 
So let's say, for example, if it gets caught in the top land, as that piston moves up and down, that is just slowly removing material from your liner, right? And that leads to scuffing and scoring. And that can cause a whole lot of damage and obviously reduce the, the overall equipment life that you can expect out of that engine.